intellectuals assembled here. The webinar will resume within few moments. Our keynote speaker, Mr. Pankaj Agrawal, has joined us. I very humbly request you to kindly switch off your mics and switch on your videos. Please ensure that the device from which you have joined displays your name. It will help us in marking attendance for certificates. You can write your queries in the chat box. Questions will be dealt at the end of the session. Thank you. Namaste, ma'am. Namaste, sirs. Uh, I will wait for your indication to get started. Definitely, sir. We are waiting for more participants to join. Just wait for two minutes. We'll sure, start. Sure, sure yeah. ma'am. Okay.
A very lovely evening to everyone present here. I, Bharti Sharma, Principal Sharda Vidya Mandir Higher Secondary School and Secretary of Sahodaya Group of CBSE School, welcomes one and all present here, especially Mr. Panka Jagrawal, founder and CEO at Tag Hive, to this wonderful and enlightening webinar. I cordially welcome esteemed principals of the member schools. I also take this as an opportunity to thank each one of you for your active participation and motivating your staff for the same. It is rightly said that if a school principal is strong, motivated, and a good manager who clearly outlines the expectations for staff and students, then the school tends to make progress. Thank you for joining us. The beauty of being a teacher is that we remain compassionate and empathetic throughout our lives. Our profession has made us more sensitive. Today, if I talk to any teacher, she can narrate the ordeal of her family members recovering from COVID-19 or dealing with the loss of friends, colleagues, or acquaintances. But what I admire is her will to win. Dear teachers, your power to overcome personal challenges and standing strong for your family, students, and colleagues makes you very special. We are going through difficult times. Corona has affected us directly or indirectly. Online teaching has changed the scenario. The journey from shouting, can you please stop talking, to can you please unmute your mics, speaks all. Esteemed teachers, I welcome you to a series of webinars organized by Sahodaya Group of CBSE Schools under the leadership of our president, Mr. D. Ashok, Principal Gyan Ganga International Academy. These webinars have been designed to introduce NEP and to develop the required professional skills in you. I heartily welcome you to the first webinar of this series. I extend a warm welcome to Mr. Rachit Nema, head of Central India Tag High. This webinar is a result of his effort, support and coordination for the same. I extend a cordial welcome to our keynote speaker, Mr. Pankaj Agrawal, who is the founder and CEO at TagHive. TagHive is a Samsung-funded education technology company with headquarters in South Korea and an office in India. Let's take a look at his excellent educational roadmap. He is a graduate from IIT Kanpur. Masters of Science from Seoul National University and MBA in General Management from Harvard University. Mr. Agarwal firmly believes that education is a great equalizer in life and that technology can help improve the quality of education. With these beliefs, TagHive has built the interactive classroom solution to positively impact the lives of kids studying in schools of rural India. Now I would request Mr. Pankaj Agrawal to take charge of this webinar. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, namaste to teachers. <laughs> namaste to everybody. Uh, namaste. Today is a very uh, special day and uh, Ma'am, we could not choose a better date than today because today is a teacher's day in South Korea. Oh, so it can be a, uh, a Kwanbanega Kuropati question, KBC question, if they ask you sometime, <laughs> in which, on which day is the teacher's day celebrated in South Korea? So it is 15th of May. Thank you. Uh, and I'm glad that we could not, we could uh, do it today. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Ma'am, and thank you, Ashok Sharji, for uh, this wonderful opportunity. Uh, so we, I think, uh, you know, NEP is such a broad topic that I will not claim to be an expert on NEP. Uh, while I have read through NEP document, all the 65 pages multiple times, and I read the draft when it came in 2019, uh, we submitted some recommendations to the Ministry of Education, at that time, Ministry of Human Resources and 
and development. And finally, when the draft was ready, we were very happy to find certain recommendations that we made getting uh, implemented in the document. And I hope that the policy will be uh, soon implemented in the coming years. I have prepared a brief presentation to help us uh, get some visuals, to help us know a little bit more about NEP in detail. Also, I will share about what we do at Tag Hive and what my mission is, how we are moving forward towards building a greater, uh, uh, building a better education system across the country. Okay, so I hope, uh, okay, just let me see. I hope you can see my screen now. A one single yes is fine, I think. Yes, sir. Uh, okay, great. Thank you so much, ma'am. So today's topic is uh, effective teaching and learning in the context of NEP 2020. Um, so when I was thinking about the topic for today, I was uh, wondering what to speak about because, you know, I hope, I'm absolutely sure teachers, principals here are much more knowledgeable, aware than I am. Uh, so it is a little bit of a, difficult situation for me to talk about things that I know less. Then I thought, let me talk about uh, teaching and learning in my own capacity, talk about NEP and talk about what we have built and how Class Sati, that is our product, our platform can fit in well in the NEP 2020. So on that uh, note, I will get started. Uh, today's session is about looking at different ways in which teaching and learning can be made more authentic. and uh, I think that every teacher, every learner, every student has their own unique way of dealing with learning. You know, we all have our own approach. Some teachers believe in very hard method of teaching. Some teachers believe in more independent method of teaching. Some learners believe in rote learning. Some learners believe in creative learning. There are different varieties of learning and teaching which make it much more interesting. And NEP uh, is giving us a guideline broadly speaking, to help us stay more anchored to one common approach. And it's mostly a policy, meaning that it has given some recommendations which we should look at. And because it's a national education policy, it is much more meaningful because it will set the standard and we will be forced at some point in time to look at it very seriously. So why not prepare for it in advance? You know, this policy uh, I'll talk about, but before that, a little bit about me. Uh, ma'am gives a brief introduction. Thank you so much, ma'am. I come from a small village in India, uh, a village named Bishanpur in Bihar. And I did my uh, studies in class till class 10 in Bihar, and then went to DPS Akepuram for my plus two, and did my undergrad from IIT Kanpur in, in electrical engineering, and went on to do a master's in South Korea, and do an MBA later on in Harvard Business School. And I've worked at Samsung for over 10 years as an engineer, as a manager, and since last five years, I've been working on Tag Hive. And Tag Hive's main product is Class Sati, which some of you may be aware of, aware about. I'm also a magician um, because I believe that uh, magic is about innovation. And I believe in innovation also. I believe that innovation can uh, make wonders. And just like any innovation, I think magic also asks us all the time, oh, how did you do it? So a good innovation is one where we ask questions, oh, how did you do it? So in that sense, I learned magic and I am very glad that I was able to convert some of my magic um, know-how into innovations at Samsung. And I'm an I'm a eternal learner. I believe in learning. Uh, I always read books every day, every week. Um, and I'm, I have two kids myself in class eight and in class three. So I really enjoy being with them. And I believe that the future of um, these kids is very difficult because mostly these are these days we have too much digital influence and i want to try to make sure that we are while we use the digital digital tools we also keep on focus in the roots which is reading books respecting elders and thinking deeply so on that note i will start about uh, talking about teaching learning and nep and class sati the first is teaching what exactly is teaching let's pause for a moment and think about it. What is teaching? So teaching's definition is that it's a process of imparting knowledge. Like we, as the giver of knowledge, as a teacher, we impart knowledge. Two plus two, four, 
calculus equations, science, different topics. We impart competence and it's an ever evolving process that involves a steep learning curve. Now, some of the elements of effective teaching, again, this is what I think about teaching and different teachers here have better insights, better approach, but the whole point of this is to just set, set the stage for NEP. So in that sense, I'm talking about my perspective on teaching. Effective teaching is about preparing well before a class. Because we teach the same class again and again, we feel we are better prepared, so it's easy. But if I'm gonna teach for the first time, I would be better be prepared with my content. Effective teaching is fair because in a class, we have students with different learning spectrums, with different mindsets. So we have to be very fair in teaching so that everybody learns. Okay. Also, we have to be creative in our ways to teach better. And as Ma'am was pointing out earlier, teaching is inherently a compassionate process. If we are not compassionate, then we cannot be a great teacher. And most importantly, um, I think effective teaching is about understanding the students better on a daily basis, which means assessments. So the more, there's a saying in management, which I learned at Harvard, is that if you don't measure, you don't manage. Or if you cannot measure, you cannot manage. So measurement is such an important element in teaching so that we can understand how the students are doing on a daily basis and then manage those students or those gaps proactively. Now, what about learning? Learning, again, is a process of acquiring new information, new skills, new values. Now, I think as a learner, I can acquire information from multiple sources by reading a book, by watching a video, by talking to a teacher, to a friend. But let us keep the context here in the context of a teacher and a student learning. I think students learn effectively when they are curious, you know, when they are able to communicate their ideas confidently, and when they are able to practice their learnings. These days we talk about experiential learning. You know, people not only read books, but they are actually going to implement those learnings in the book into actual learning, into actual, into actual real life setting. And even learners these days, they come up with their own unique methods of learning. In my days, when I was small, my only way of learning was through books, through teachers. There was no digital influence that time. But these days, kids find school as just one of the many ways or one of the many sources to learn. They have so many other influences, so many other sources. And it's very important as teachers, as learners to understand that the spectrum has widened. The source has widened. So we better understand that and leverage each of these different methods. One of that being a technology. And I think NEP uh, is very important because it talks about technology. How do we really use technology to shape our policy going forward? Now, the first education policy of 21st century is our NEP 2022, 2020. And it is replacing the previous NEP, which came in 1986, long time back. And we can imagine that going forward, the new policy, say in 2050, will come up. But we need time to implement the policy recommendations that are in the NEP. Now, very briefly, some of the goals of NEP are about early childhood care, foundational literacy, universal access to education, and so forth and so on. Now, here, I want to really highlight about two things. One is effective governance. The NEP talks about effective governance. They talk about tools that we can use to really measure the learning and teaching on a daily basis and enable better learning. It talks about equitable and inclusive education. Not that people who have access to good resources only learn, but everybody. So it should be equitable. So in that sense, NEP is very, very powerful. We'll go into details in a moment. Now I will talk about the key aspects of NEP 2020. And also, I will talk about how Class Sati can be a great enabler. Now, before I talk about how Class Sati can be a great enabler, let us take a moment to understand what Class Sati is. I have presented, I have prepared a brief video to show you that. Now, I'll play that here. I hope uh, you all can see my video. Ma'am, has the screen opened up here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And can you yes, hear the sir. audio as well, ma'am? The volume is quite low, sir. 
like a solution can you hear now that can make any classroom yes sir, fine okay yes, thank you connect all the stakeholders all that is needed is a sathi bag with student clickers and a mobile app let's dive in pooja ma'am teaches a concept and then uses the class sathi app on her smartphone to do a quick formative assessment students respond with their sathi clickers and the detailed statistics on the app ma'am do you see the video as well ma'am yes sir it's visible okay ma'am help the teacher to decide whether to stay on that concept or to move on pooja ma'am can also know which student needs more help on a daily basis students can seamlessly continue their learning at home with class sathi app on their parents phones all students get personalized question recommendations based on their learning level so that they can improve gradually without losing confidence parents can review their child's quiz performance attendance status and much more even busy parents can now live a guilt free life when it comes to participating in their child's learning journey Lastly, Class Sathi enables administrators such as school principals and government officers to overview and monitor school performance easily. Class Sathi helps them now see data points not possible before. They can check the attendance and learning outcome statistics whenever they want and take corrective action. Class Sathi is one of its kind, the wowable classroom solution powered by South Korean technology. Now classroom learning can be much more fun and the much needed bond between all stakeholders becomes stronger with every question solved by students. Class Sathi is the next big revolution in classrooms we have all been waiting for. For more information visit our website tag-hive.com or reach out to us at sathi@tag-hive.com. Okay, great, ma'am. Class Sathi is the world's first mobile app-based classroom clicker solution. I hope that was uh, um, visible and it was clear. So here, Class Sathi. I'll talk about NEP in a moment, but I thought about uh, sharing something about Class Sathi for two or three minutes so that we understand how NEP and Class Sathi can go hand in hand. So, ma'am, Class Sathi. Uh, Search Class Sathi. is a very simple tool that can make any classroom smart at low cost and it comes with a mobile application for the teachers for the students for the principal and a small handheld remote like a device for the students these days the schools are closed so the clickers are not effective but we have built something similar in the virtual setting so that students can be with the teacher and learn better to give you more uh, sort of details into class sathi very quickly so right now class sathi is being used by students from class 6 to class 10 it has a lot of questions on maths and science and all are in cbsc syllabus these questions are all made by iit graduates they can solve homeworks here which are given by teachers as you can see on the screen students can also self practice mock tests they can see a lot of data points on their strong skills weak skills and really learn every day class sathi you can easily download on the google play store or it is also available with this link on the iphone now students can really self learn on a daily basis they can go to each chapter and they can look at these different questions on each chapter and practice their learning the beautiful piece of class sathi is that each student gets a personalized set of recommendations depending on the student's level and all these points are talked about in the nep which i will come to in a moment but i'm just highlighting that because it is so important to understand that class sathi is very different from other apps which are just giving you questions but here we are making it personalized using the ai technology there are a lot of other features which i will skip for the moment and just one number here 25 lakh questions have been really solved on class sathi in last one year alone that really speaks volumes about uh, about about what we have built and about how students are loving it in fact i want to just take a moment to show you one screen uh right now class sathi as you can see in real time this is the real time data as we as i'm speaking all over the country class sathi is being used right now so this really is speaking a lot about the acceptance of the product across the nation 
coming back to the presentation, uh, for the teachers here, uh, this is a great tool to be really able to connect students because in online learning, the biggest challenge that we are facing is that teachers are not able to really have a great control over the students. Students are not that much engaged because they have so much distraction. You know, there's so much noise around in the home, multiple students, multiple things going on. Everybody is on the call when the classes are going on. So much of disturbance. And teachers have so many students to look at on one screen, very difficult to really manage. With our solution, teachers are now able to really control the students very easily. They can give homeworks to the students before the class starts or after the class is over and really understand how the students are learning on a daily basis. We've designed it, we have designed it in such a simple manner that teachers can give homework in less than a minute to all your students, all your 40, 50, 100 students. In one minute, you can give the homework. And also you don't have to spend any time in correcting the homework because our app corrects them automatically. And there are so many data points that you can see if you really are interested to know more and then understand, oh, this student is in the good category. This student is in the excellent category. This is the graph. I need to focus more on this topic in the next class. That way you really feel more empowered. And as a principal, you can now really see the learning of the entire school in one snapshot. You can choose different classes here, different subjects, maths and science in our case, and understand how many students have solved how many questions, what is the average score, who are the top five students, what are the weak areas, strong areas, chapter-wise, skill-wise. So really you feel good and you can really proudly tell your parents the parent community that you are now able to monitor the learning and students are performed this much. And when you have parent teachers meeting, you can use this data point to really engage the parents more deeply because parents love, I'm also a parent. I love to see the data when I go to the parent teachers meeting. I love to see talk, teachers talking about my students, my child's performance very specifically. So with this, they can, they can open up the dashboard. They can say, please see your daughter or your son has performed this in the, good in this chapter, but weak in this chapter. So let's focus, we are focusing on this topic and we want you to focus at home on this topic. Now, coming back to the NEP. So the NEP talks about um, AI-based software that could be used by students to help track their growth through the school years based on learning data. An interactive questionnaire for parents, for students, for teachers. I think this is where Class Sati can fit in really well. We have done that keeping that in mind that we are able to create a system that connects the teachers, the students, the principals, and the administrators, if there are any, to really be on the same page and use data, learning data, to take action, corrective action. Now, NEP talks about increasing enrollment and engagement. It talks about removing dropout rates. It talks about 100% gross enrollment ratio. Right now, the GER from Class one to I think college is around less than 20%. Like a student who enters class one, if there are 100 students who enter class one, only 20 students graduate from a college. I think that is less than 20%, but very less number. So we really want to focus that we are able to give personalized attention to each student so that the gross enrollment ratio increases so that each student is able to learn they are instead they are able to stay inspired to learn because a personalized system is taking care of them right now that is where class sati can really help because we have done pilot tests in the past and we have found that attendance went up and learning outcomes also went up it helps in increasing classroom engagement in the classroom in particular we have the clicker that can really maximize the learning in the classroom and with our tracking mechanism with our ai powered analytics the teacher can really better understand the student and the students can feel more empowered to learn better. The next topic on the NEP is about emphasis on actual learning. It talks about learning should be holistic, should be enjoyable, should be engaging. It should be two-way. Learning should be more of a two-way mechanism instead of one way where teachers being a sage on the stage, just speak and students just listen. We want it to be two-way where students can also participate on a daily basis. And that is where I think Class Sati can be very powerful because our clicker solution is one of its own kind. It really ensures maximum classroom engagement. And right now the schools are closed. Even then, our solution has a virtual mechanism 
where students can stay connected with the teachers and teachers can feel that they're in command. For each uh, question that is on class Sati, there's a concept card, there's a video, and it helps the student to learn better by looking at the video. And one of the most important pieces of class Sati is that it enables even the shy students, students who don't feel to talk too much in the classroom, people who are a little bit introvert perhaps, to really interact and participate actively in the classroom activities. The third point about NEP is it talks about transforming assessment for student development. You know, in the past, even today, I think, we mostly have summative assessments. Every three months, we will have a semester or a you know, midterm exam. At the year, year end, we will have one final exam. And then we understand how the students are doing. While I understand we have quizzes on a regular basis, but I think we can do more. So it talks about going from formative assess from summative assessment to formative assessment. And generally, assessments have been used for assessments, for assessments of learning. But we want to do assessments for learning. Like assessment should be done in a way that it helps students to understand where they stand and learn better. Right? Every day, every month, every, you know, every semester. And the report card should provide teachers and parents with valuable information on how to support a student at the personal level. You know? And that is where class sati can be very powerful because the fundamental point of class sati is formative assessment. And I think it's a powerful tool for all the stakeholders, for students, teachers, and the entire schooling system to optimize learning. Because we have so much of depth and in-depth analysis and reports that can enhance the quality of holistic learning of the students. And parents are also involved in this. They can track their students' progress with Class Sati app, and they are provided with valuable information how to really stay more connected with the students, with the school community, to really help the students learn on a daily basis. I see some hands being raised. I think I'll uh, come to that if there are any questions uh, towards the end of the presentation, if that is fine. And I think towards the end, I want to talk about uh, teacher-centric approach. NEP talks about teacher as a central element in this entire policy. They talk about how do we really enable teachers to do their, to do their jobs effectively. You know, teachers are burdened with a lot of tasks. They have, of course, to teach in the classrooms, but besides that, they have to spend so much time in the routine administrative job, non-teaching activities, you know, like managing the class, attendance, correcting for homework, correcting for exam, and bunch of things, which take away immense amount of time from the teaching time. Also, teachers should be given autonomy in choosing the way they want to teach and helping students to learn effectively in the classrooms. That's what NEP talks about. Now, class sati is really a solution that can enable that happen because it really helps the teachers focus less on the routine jobs. Attendance can happen immediately on class sati. Homework assignment can happen easily. Correction of homeworks can be done immediately without spending much time. Understanding the students break up, how many students are in different brackets, which students need more attention can be understood immediately. Understand, I understand the teachers have a fair sense of the good and the not so good students. But there are some students who left who are kind of ignored because you know we only focus on the best and the not so on the you know poor side. But there are students in between who are perhaps left less catered to. But with class sati, you are able to monitor each student effectively. And the analytics and the in-depth information of class sati really empowers teachers to choose their own method of teaching. They can try different methods. Of teaching. They can try more of flip method if they think it's work, working out. They can try, you know, giving students more tasks, less tasks, focus on students forming small groups if they want, because now the teachers know which students need more help and they can take corrective action in time. And lastly, NEP talks about extensive use of technology. It talks about technology use in education planning and management. I was, I remember I reading something in the NEP that talks about they will create a center. Uh, that will look at assessment technology. Uh, that center of technology center will be within NEP as a central pillar to really help uh, use technology in the 
domain of assessments. And I think Glass Sati can be that technology because it is really easy to use and effective. And we have put the South Korean technology. I come from India. I have IIT uh, Kanpur uh, education and I have studied in Korean university as well. And I think we have really been able to combine the theoretical knowledge of India and the practical knowledge of South Korea into one place in class Sati. And we have been able to build something that is really immensely powerful as technology to provide the great teaching and learning environment. And of course, we use AI in our own capacity in the, in the uh, Sati app, for example, one of the new things that we are building right now, and uh, I would like to keep it confidential, but I'll share with you a very brief uh, topic. Like when teachers give homeworks to the students, for say, it is subjective type question, right? Now, teachers don't have time to look at all the subjective type question answers in detail. What if a technology can read through the solution written by the students and give teachers some tips? Oh, this student has done a great job. You can skip the, reading the answer of this question. This student needs a lot of help. I think what the student has written is not at all good. So if as a teacher, if you're getting that, as, that help as a Sati, from the Sati tool, then you really feel powered. You think, wow, I don't have to look at 50% of the homeworks because they are all great. I can focus my time on these 50% because they need more help. So we're building an AI tool to really help teachers spend their time better in focusing more on students that need help. That is all I have to present um, on the NEP and on class Sati. I'm sure there are a bunch of questions uh, that we have, and I'm happy to uh, talk about them. As I mentioned earlier, I don't, I don't want to pretend to be an expert on NEP, but I'm an expert on class Sati. You can ask me any question on class Sati, and you can ask me any question on how NEP and class Sati go hand in hand. And I, on that note, I want to thank you again for listening, for being patient with my presentation and happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you so much, sir. I would like to sincerely express my appreciation for such an enlightening session. Anu bhadraha kratvo yantu vishvataha. Let noble thoughts come to me from all directions. I'm sure this interaction has enlightened curiosity to know more. Now, moving on to the question answer session, I invite Mrs. Poonam Raizada, Principal, Worldway International School, and Treasurer of our Sahodaya to conduct this session. Thank you, Bharti Ma. And welcome, Pankaj, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I know NEP is a comprehensive and a very vast, and on one day webinar, it cannot be taken, right? Yes, you have thrown light that it is technology-based. We know that the teachers, they have to uh, make themselves better in technology. The first question which I will be asking on behalf of the participants who are attending this webinar of yours, what about the teachers who are not very good in technology? They do not have good hands on that. Do you think those teachers have to work now? Should they start working now? If yes, then in which direction? Yeah, ma'am, uh, I think a good technology is something that does not require uh, teachers or does not require the users to get struggle, you know, because yeah. you can make technology in multiple ways. I think if teachers are struggling with the technology, I will... Yeah very confidently say that the technology is not good. So there are, I think it's important to select the right technology. And if a technology is creating a lot of trouble in terms of, you know, the way it is designed, in terms of the way it works, I think that is not a good technology. So that having said that, I think it is high time that we as a teacher community, as a school community, Identify technologies that are making an impact, which are easy to use. And once you've identified that, I think we should all use it. 
because technology is powerful it goes i mean there is no second thought in that you know technology um uh, helps you know i was watching three idiots a bit uh, last week and uh, there was a question asked by a teacher some of you may remember what is machine and uh, yeah. amit khan he says machine is something that reduces human effort mm. well the technology with the definition of machine can be more complicated in the literal sense but in easily in easy terms it is uh, something that reduces human effort likewise technology is something that reduces human effort so i think if teachers want to get more support in reducing their human effort and using their time for effective uh, teaching they should definitely look at technology and i would just make one point that if they find it difficult i think they should ask themselves is it the right technology instead of asking the question should i use the technology the right question to ask is is it the right is it the right technology thank you sir actually when i have gone through the neb what i can find out is most of the things whatever is mentioned in neb to be done when it is implemented actually they are taking place in the classes only yes. all the things have been framed into one vision statement called national education policy 2020 teachers first of all should have that confidence that we already are teaching 21st century skills we already are making children to think differently but only thing is they have fear of this nep should we recommend each and every teacher to read the nep how they should be enlightened and should be made NEP friendly in terms of teachers i am asking a lot of fear lot of questions lot of uh, you know inquisitiveness is there so if you can help out or help out our teachers to be NEP friendly this is Sir. great i think you know we always have policies for example we say let us be green yeah swachh bharat abhiyan let's say right uh, we all create those uh, campaigns so it doesn't mean agar aaj aaj ek swachh bharat abhiyan is launched does not mean that i am less swachh today it is just that the abhiyan is for the is is a, at a national level to help us all be aligned towards that mission so as you rightly pointed out ma'am that the policy is just a national vision that have been put together but most of the things that are in the policy are already being done in the classrooms true if if as a teacher i am teaching students in a way that students are learning i don't have to worry i don't have to be worried about nep per se nep is something that is just the outline with some recommendations and that is to just set the stage to help us be on the same page as a teacher community now nep talks about technology in learning in teaching nep talks about assessments so it's good to know as a teacher that the trends are there because nep has been made keeping lot of inputs in mind they talk about coding knowledge they talk about learning second language third language right so as a teacher if i am a teacher i would love to be in touch or be aware about the recommendations be aware about what the new trends are so in that sense i think all the teachers should take a quick look at nep honestly the the document is not too long it's just 65 pages so and that too half of it is ha- having higher education so if you are a yes, school ma'am. teacher then you can yes, go ma'am. through the school education only yes ma'am so i would highly urge that please uh, you know it's very sim- it's very simple read generally hota hai kya any government document is too complicated to read but luckily when i could comprehend nep in a very easy way i'm i'm absolutely sure all the teachers all the principals here will be able to comprehend it much more easily because you are on the ground so as ma'am pointed out the the scope for the uh, primary and secondary education is only in the first couple of pages i think first 20 30 pages and after that they talk about higher education so we can skip that if you if you if you just read that document in our free time it's very easy read there's no harm It's, we just feel we just uh, sound more smart 
and we know acha ye kar rahe hain log and then when a new change is introduced in the school later on then we don't feel are ye kahan se aa gaya we are better prepared to you know we feel that okay ye kabhi na kabhi to aayega ye it will happen in the future it will come if that is not happening already True. right so in that sense it gives more uh, comfort to the teachers if that is the right word to be aware about what's the future going to be and feel that okay we are already doing we are already doing so many things so we should we should feel good about it that we are already you know at par or on par with the recommendations that are being there in, that are being suggested in the policy true true actually teacher uh yes ma'am learn we have to unlearn also that unlearning part is quite difficult for teachers because they are teaching in the same way chalk and board method from years they are very much skilled in doing it and they have to step into a new world where not only chalk and board is there there are toys there are hands on experiment there are paperwork there are, there are visits there are lab activities which they have not actually accepted so this unlearning and relearning for teachers had to be done once i was reading the um, nep i read it second time i took a pencil and i wrote if it is written 21st century skill collaboration did i worked on it i find yes i have worked on that did i worked on communication part yes i have worked did i worked on this particular part so i find most of the things of the nep we already are doing the only thing few things are left and then the things become very clear being a technological hand i would like to ask you next is what about the rural areas where this technology is not that much strong do you think class sathi or anything else can help out nep to be implemented properly over there even in your country or in india yeah ma'am uh, you are right you know there is a big digital divide that we see uh, between yeah. uh, sections of society in the country um, and i think nep is uh, going to help us reduce that digital divide and let me explain to you how ma'am uh, you know in government in india has 1 million government schools dasla government school hai in india mein and uh, most of them don't have internet connectivity and uh, teachers i think uh, are not well trained in those schools perhaps to even understand technology uh, and the classrooms are not equipped with the rights Uh, infrastructure to handle any technology now in that setting how do we really uh, bring technology to the schools easily right generally speaking what we understand as smart school is a school that has projectors smart boards you know animation content all that but i want to really challenge the notion of smart school i think that is fancy school a school that has all these elements you know fancy school so i have been to some of the schools uh, in 2019 in rural india in varanasi in uh, in visakhapatnam in delhi in some of the areas where we have mcd schools and i found that some of these schools have all these uh, elements government schools but they don't use it that often because they find it dangerous are kharab ho gaya to kya hoga if it gets damaged how will they handle now when i was seeing all these i realized any technology that we work on should be light should be easy to use should not require maintenance and nep talks about light but tight technology ma'am so i think as i was telling earlier if technology is not easy if it is not serving our purpose then it is bad technology so it is high time we kind of understand what is a good technology what is a bad technology now on that note i want to really point out that class sathi happens to be in the good technology bracket of course i built class sathi so i will say that but i have points to prove that because in our case in class sathi's case we don't require schools to have internet connectivity we don't require schools to have even electricity we don't require schools to do a lot of maintenance with class sathi we use existing teachers smartphone to enable learning and teaching in a better way to collect data and provide the data learning data to all the stakeholders in a easy way in fact the mp government and the up government has have chosen us as their preferred technology for classrooms 
now because of covid the schools are closed so we are not able to really make a progress in the classroom section in the classroom uh, domain but i feel that coming to your question technology is definitely required it's not a mat- it's not a question of uh, if technology i think it's a question of when technology kab hoga and which technology so while class sati will require also to evolve over time i think we need more of those kinds of technology which are lighter in nature which don't require teachers to be nervous are ye kaise hoga i cannot do teachers should feel empowered because teachers are at the center of teaching and learning in my opinion so they should feel empowered so any technology that helps teachers teach better that is right technology very true true truly said actually we should have those six men with uh, working every time who when where how why yes. right when if these uh, six men honestly working around us around teachers they i think they don't are necessarily uh, to be to go through the nep they can do everything very nicely in the classes if they are focusing on these things and making children also inclusive for that Absolutely. now my last question to you regarding to nep is nep says that vocational skills should be developed in the students how you see in the country like india the vocational development in secondary schools have you worked on it so ma'am vocational uh, learning again has been a topic of discussion for long nep just mentions it again highlight the importance of that uh you know vocational learning becomes very relevant because what happens is after the education is complete for the students they are not able to find the right jobs so in a way the whole point of vocational learning challenges the way we teach if you look at it broadly the idea of vocational learning is to make you employable right you are able to do some job and make some earning for your family after you complete your education on the other side education says or the the promise of education or promise of a good education is that if you are educated well you can get a good job right mm-hmm. so i think vocational education um, becomes relevant in in places in areas where i think teaching and learning is not that great where we don't have too many opportunities so uh, you know definitely i believe that if we are able to teach well to the students and if we are able to connect them to the next lap of education that we don't necessarily need vocational education in my opinion because i never got vocational education when i was a student yeah yes you know we don't need that so i think vocational education becomes as a plan b in my opinion mm. so that students have something to look something to fall back to in case they don't complete their education hmm. no even i feel so one school cannot provide all the vocational skills and uh, expertise so if the schools they can they can make the groups if one school has one of the vocational uh, courses in them the second school can have second the third school can have third then we can have a vocational skills absolutely uh, you know everywhere uh, and that way it has to be planned out i agree so basically the aim is how you are taking the nep uh, you know statements and how you are applying them that makes the I agree, ma'am. I think, uh, and NEP will NEP is just a recommendation. They will not force you know schools to enable vocational learning. I think this is just a policy document. You know, they will create uh, some you know some processes or some rules based on this policy, right? So when this when those rules come, then we can address those things at time. I think policy vocational learning is not bad per se, but I think we should not, uh, is, you know. already we are not able to teach well already we are completely you know burdened with lot of tasks now you are adding one more additional task of vocational learning to the school i don't understand if that is going to be a big sort of uh, solution out if there is resource available like you know after school and there is a separate set of people who are doing that vocational learning vocational teaching then why not it can be done why not why yeah. not so that way i think uh, the the session of nep from your side was quite fruitful and now it's over to bharti ma'am bharti ma'am your turn now thank you so much poonam ma'am thank you and i would like to thank team uh, tag hive
for such an informative and fruitful session. I would love to thank our mentors and member school principals. And most of all, I would like to thank our participants, the teachers who share this responsibility to learn and apply in the classrooms. Thank you everyone. Looking forward to your participation in many more webinars. Thank you. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. Thank you so much, ma'am. And I just have one uh, small request. Yes, uh, sir. The principal, that uh, you know, uh, please request your students. And I would, as a, as a teachers, I would request you all to uh, look at our Class Sati Learning app. And if you like it, then you can recommend it to your students. I'm sharing the link on the chat box here. If you can share it with your student community, that will be really great. Definitely, sir. We'll do that. Okay, ma'am. I'll just put it here, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you so much, Thank you, Thank you so much uh, Shoki. Thank you so much. Uh, and I'm so glad we're able to do this. Um, you know, wonderful learning experience. No, no. We have we are eternal learners, sir. We have to keep on learning all the time. If you can guide all the participants also, like uh, if they want to uh, use this tag hype, is there any commercial or something uh, for this tag hype that you can right. at least clear them? So right now the app is completely free we don't charge anything for that so because of pandemic we don't want to really burden the school with additional cost so i would highly urge you to uh, look at the app as a free resource now um, you know we have built solution where teachers can give homeworks to the students where principals can monitor that comes at a small price but i'm willing to give uh, a 50, 30 day or 60 days of free trial and uh, also, we have a Sati Sikchak uh, competition going on right now, where teachers can uh, join in the competition of Sati Sikchak. Rachit Nema uh, Ji, who is our central uh, head for Tag Hive India, he can uh, share more details on uh, Sati Sikchak program. So teachers here, if you really want to join the competition of Sati Sikchak, please uh, reach out to Rachit. Uh, Rachit, uh, if you can share your number on the chat box here, it will be very useful. Uh, Sati Sikchak is a, is a competition for teachers. Um, and uh, please reach out to Rachit for, uh, uh, for more information. Parthi, madam, you can see two participants have raised their hands. If they have any queries, we can sort it out here. Itself. So maybe Rachit can also. Rukmini, ma'am, and Shalini, ma'am, please write your questions in the chat box. Ms. Rukmini Dube and Ms. Shalini Gupta, you have raised your hands. Please write your questions in the chat box. In the meantime, I have shared the link of the Class Sati app, ma'am, uh, on the chat box for everybody yes, to look. Sir. You can share with your student community. Yeah. It's completely free, ma'am. They can just use it um, and uh, start practicing questions on maths and science for class 6 to class 10. It will really boost their confidence, ma'am. You know, people want to prepare for IIT and uh, all medical exams, but they, are, they suddenly come to know in class 9 or 10 when it is too late to build yeah. the right thing. So if you're able to build the instinct from class 6 onwards, it's going to be very, very useful. Yes. So ma'am, if you can share the students uh, to look at this. That will be really great. And for the teachers, yes. it's a competition um, going on and uh, has more details on that. We can have a separate session for that if it is required, ma'am. Okay, sir. We'll be in contact with Rachit and we'll inform you about yes, this. Okay. 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir.